Everyday Life with Guardsmares, Chapter 27, Artemis Sparkshower's Point of View. Today was a great day. It wasn't because Artemis had made a new friend the other day in the form of Sergeant Ebenshield, her new squad mate. It wasn't because she got to sub in for her friend and comrade Specialist Lily Glamour Spear while she recuperated from acute mana poisoning, though to be fair that was a lot more interesting than sitting around their quarters or doing boring training exercises. And it wasn't even because forecasts called for sunny skies and warm spring weather. It was a great day, because Artemis got another letter from her puddin. Huckleberry Pudding, Artemis's cold friend back in Barry, had at last found the time to put Quill to paper and sent her a dispatch, after having failed to write to her since she'd last seen him a month and a half ago. And in it, he'd given heartfelt apologies for how long it had taken him to write, how he'd failed to come visit her, and how he was sorry that he hadn't figured out a plan to move to Canterlot. It was all good stuff that made Artemis tear up with joy when she'd first read it. But the contents of the letter honestly didn't matter that much to her. It was enough just to hear from him, to see his signature at the bottom, and to smell the faintest hint of his musk on the paper. That's all it took to send her up to the stratosphere. Artemis was gonna write to him back that night as soon as her shift was up. Maybe she can get some leave to go visit him. Hmm. Or maybe she could see about doing what Glamour Spear suggested and send him a photograph of herself in something... risque? She'd have to think about that one. Her puddin' was a traditional cult from Barry, and Barry was as traditional a town as they come. She might set tongues wagging in her hometown if she sent her cult a picture of herself in a piece of high-cut Canterlot fashion. After all, what Glamour Spear and Ebenshield had been wearing last night left basically nothing to the imagination. They might as well have gone around with nothing on at all. Which they did all the time, she supposed. But still, a dress without a bustle? Scandalous. And they'd come back scandalously late too. As Artemis was a light sleeper, she'd heard them all when they came in. The first was Corporal Bounce just after midnight when her shift was over. No surprise or ignominy there. Glamour Spear was second, staggering in at around 1 o'clock, and her hoof steps heavy on the floor. She might have had a little too much to drink with Captain Mailtuff, the anti-magic pills surely didn't help either. And finally, Sergeant Evanshield had come in, quiet as a mouse, at almost 4 in the morning. Artemis had barely even heard her. It was just a quiet fluttering of leathery wings. She was noisier than a Pegasus trying their best to be silent, but not by much. Plenty of Artemis' own kind made a lot more noise when flapping about. Anyway, she clearly must have had a good time to have stayed out so long, and so late. The Pegasus hoped that she could bring Glamour Spear onto liking up and shield soon. It wouldn't be good to serve as the in-between friend for too long, considering how they all had worked together. Clearly they had some interest in common that she could bring up. Artemis didn't think clubbing was for her, but she'd bet that they would have a lot of fun doing it together. Maybe the next time Glamour Spear was in between Salt Licks? Eh, there were thoughts for later. Still happy and full of energy from that moment the morning's mail slipped under their door, Artemis eagerly knocked on the door to the Royal Engineer's chambers. Coming! Giddily pushing her way into her VIP's chambers, Artemis sounded off. Specialist Sparkshower reporting for duty, sir. Anonymous was standing in the middle of the room wearing an outfit that she hadn't seen before, but it looked exactly like his new athletic clothes as Ebba described them. He was doing some kind of stretching, with his legs splayed out wide as he bent over to one side to touch his feet. Good morning, Specialist. You seem to be in a good mood today. Yes, sir, I am. As she eagerly shut the door behind her, the Royal Engineer got back up, before bending over the other way. Would I be intruding if I asked why? Aw, your VIP cares about your happiness. That's nice of him. She felt herself blushing a little bit. No, sir. I received a letter from my cold friend this morning. Standing up again and placing his hands on his hips, he gave her a knowing nod. Oh, I see. I take it he's not in Canterlot? No, sir, he isn't. He spread his arms and rotated his torso completely to one side, stretching at the waist. I hope everything's going well for you two. Long distance relationships can be difficult sometimes. Artemis bobbed her head, still smiling. They're going well, sir. Thank you, sir. The Royal Engineer swiveled his shoulders around in the other direction. I must confess that I was expecting Specialist Glamour Spear this morning. I was hoping to make use of my new exercise wear in order to get her final approval. Wasn't she still scheduled on morning duty? She is, sir, but I'm replacing her while she's on medical leave. Apparently, the MXP Games totem didn't completely protect her from the mana poisoning that she gave herself when she took down Ice Pwn. She's suffering headaches and other effects. Her charge stopped his exercises. Oh no, she should have said something yesterday. I had no visitor, so I could have easily dismissed her to go see a doctor. Is she alright? In service training, you were told to rarely expect sympathy from a VIP. VIPs were demanding and self-interested to a fault. Anonymous was full of compassion, though. Artemis had really lucked out, and Emmon Shield was right to have taken a liking to him. The old stories about bad ponies being miserable villains couldn't possibly be true, and no scoundrel could as quickly taking a liking to such a charitable pony as the Royal Engineer. She'll be fine, sir. But she's on medication that makes it impossible for her to serve as your bodyguard for the time being. 
Well, do give her my best wishes this afternoon. In the meantime, would you care to escort me on a jog around the garden? Asking you politely as if you had a choice? It really was a good day to be Artemis Sparkshower. Absolutely, sir. As her VIP beckoned her over and they both headed towards the patio door behind the Royal Engineer's Bureau, he paused and held up a finger. Oh, you've just reminded me of a question I had earlier, Specialist. What does the MXP stand for in MXP Games? Artemis almost winced. Even growing up in the simple countryside, that was an awkward topic. Uh, it's a little embarrassing, to be honest. The old name for the MXP games is the Grand Tournament of Canterlot, and some ponies still call it that because every few years some pony in the Royal Guard decides it needs a hip, cool new name. Anonymous raised an eyebrow at her as he unlocked the glass door. The latest such rebranding has it as the Most Extreme Pony Challenge. With the door opened, Artemis took to the air, clutching her spear in one forehoof as she awkwardly scratched her shoulder with the other. It's generally considered so cringy that every pony always uses the MXP acronym instead. The Royal Engineer snorted, and then began to laugh. <laughs> oh, I know exactly what that's like. We sometimes have the same problem in my world with such things as well. As he shut the door behind them both, he kicked up his heels and headed off. But I wouldn't mind hearing a little about the games, if you're able to talk and fight at the same time. As any Pegasus couldn't do that. Sure thing, sir. Artemis took up a position beside and very slightly above him and began to explain to her alien VIP the intricacies of the Royal Guard's annual martial games. The air was cool, but the sun shined down on her wings, filling Artemis with warmth. There was a nice breeze in the air too, sending the tails of her White Guard's pony caparison fluttering. It really was nice out. Flying off with her VIP, Artemis was filled with eager anticipation to see what pleasures the rest of the day held in store for her. And Celestia willing, she'd see her dear Puddin' again soon. Happiness spread around the whole chapter, what's not to love about that? Now let's get on to our positive donators. Top donators are 630, Peter Coulthard, J10 Man, Darkseid, and only one thing. TacoCat598, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, CrazyColor557, Stu Hex, Will, Omicron Lyrae, Chris, Twinkie, Dospo, Delta Omega, Jack Hedge, RuneCypher9852, Madman Stan, Lizzie Perkett, Drake Love Dragon, Hunter Norman, Stephen Bingham, LineGuy12, Sorcerer Constantine, Hudzaza, Convair, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.